Hello, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today, we're going to do a tonalist watercolor landscape painting in a palette that I have neglected for a while. I'm going to be working from a photograph. So I should be able to fit the photograph in here and have the finished result there so you guys can paint along. And I'll upload a download of the photograph to the Patreon for you all to follow along with. So this palette revolves around uh, thalo or thalo, however you want to pronounce it, uh, blue, and it uses the earth tones to mix the greens. I adopted the thalo blue to my um, palette a long while back. Originally, I would have just ultramarine, and this is when I was following along with Ron Ranson, ultramarine and the earth tones, but. I found that those kind of went grayish and in a James Fletcher Watson book he had ultramarine and earth tones for the grayish background colors with the phthalo blue and I think it was called Windsor blue at the time when it came out that he used for the forward colors for the greens so that's the idea that I'm working with it's been a while since I've played with it and we're going to try to uh, bring it back. I'm going to grab some raw sienna, a lot of raw sienna, put out a little bit of fresh pigment on the palette, probably way too much off the bat, but we'll just map out the sky and the water and get some ideas of where everything's going to go. So it is spring and just recently I uploaded a picture of a flower painting uh, to, you know, say the first day of spring. And I talked about the rich greens, the wet greens that we can get down here. We had a line of storms come in from Texas. Unfortunately, in Texas, there was a lot of um, tornado action that came from it. Um, here, not so much. But we had off from work as a precaution due to just the, uh, the nature of the potential weather. So the storms came through, uh, everything is wet and green, and I went and snapped this photo. So this is a mixture of phthalo blue, ultramarine, and raw sienna. And you'll see the green that it creates. I painted this scene a long, long time ago. This is a coolie on the other side of the river. And usually this coulee floods. So we must have not gotten too much rain today. Pull that out. We have our background trees here. Placing everything along. I'm going to grab some light red oxide and push this with ultramarine to a background blue, purple. Jump back in here, in here. And when uh, photographing this, I thought immediately how it was very much a kind of tunnel composition as well as the S shape composition. You have the trees on either side and it leads the eye back into the middle. And we also have that S shape curve right there if we want to pronounce that. Going wet and wet in the sky. This is for the foliage of future trees. I could have went ultramarine into the sky as well in the beginning. I think if I was to repaint this, I would 
play around with that. Here's some raw sienna. And we have that muddy dark water. This is the land. We'll probably grab some lemon yellow. We'll see. I'll name the colors and I'll list the color on the um, Patreon, Patreon, sorry, and the YouTube write-up that I do for this. Now just getting everything in place. Oh, there is something that I wanted to mention. Um, rolling down the window and taking the picture for this, um, I could smell just the the swampy muddiness of it. It was very stagnant at the moment. Here is some burnt umber, so we can get that muddy feel. This coolie leads right into um, the Vermilion River. And I've looked at it on maps. It extends pretty far up. Grab some Payne's Gray. This actually, this coolie has a name, uh, Valcor coolie. I'm not sh quite sure the origin of the, the name of this one. Nice jump, Hammy. This is Payne's Gray right on the, the edge here. But this uh, passes through the more historic district in town. So it may have an origin with somebody's name, a family name. I could map in some trees. This one to cut right there. This is uh, different than my normal approach of putting in the background trees, but I'll go with it. And lately I've just been using the rigger for trees, but once again, you can just use the hake and just go with the flow. Build up that bush of trees here. there. Let's see. We'll grab the number one for some background stuff. From inside my house, inside the art room, actually hear a lot of frogs out there going on right now. So this one's on the other side of the river. There is um, two coolies on either side of me. One, um, Actually, like goes underneath the street, underneath the town. I guess I just built right over it. Let's see. I have lemon yellow right here, so I'm gonna put some of that out. Um, a few things to note while I'm opening this up, just to talk about it. The phthalo, or you know, phthalo blue, has kind of a mentholy vix vapor rub type feel to it the the color that's what i've always equated it to and at first the color might seem off there's a lemon yellow but it really does build to a lovely color hey are you comfy in that box 
It's going to wind up knocking so much stuff over. Going back here. I have some exciting Daniel Smith colors to play with, but I'm just not ready for them yet. I'll break them out soon. I want to bring down the reflections of trees in this color painting, in this picture. Seems like my light keeps on wanting to go warm. I have a few different lights, nothing special. Um, two desk lamps, one third one that kind of hooks over. I've been setting it off to the side. It's been setting a glare lately in this corner of the paintings. So just trying to get a little bit better with that. And I put, good job, Pammy. Some lights that were the fluorescent, I guess, lights and they um, were at the warmth that's supposed to be for natural light. I find that that helped. I'm thinking that one day I might go back and delete some of the initial videos that I filmed for the channel because of just how, excuse me, how dark and hard to see they are. They're still very wet, probably all the humidity. Before the storm came through, it was very uh, warm and humid. I have this uh, some scraping tools that were given to me by a uh, YouTuber. I call him Mr. Mega. I can't pronounce the whole YouTube name. Um, he has commented quite a bit and he sent me some handmade scraping tools that have a lot of different uh, potential and texture and scraping abilities. The different edges have different widths. Um, they're really, really awesome. I used them for the first time the other day. And they're a lot of fun. Going horizontal with the scrapes here to maintain the horizontal plane of water. And we'll play around with this other one he made for some tree scraping. usually use a card for scraping, a sharp edge and a rounded edge for my different textures. This one is very fun. This is going to wind up coming off of here. This one's going to come up here. These guys come out the side. We're gonna have to darken all of these trunks up after we do a dry off. Forget who it was, but somebody had commented on a previous painting where I had played with the Thalo Blue, um, but it was a while back. I think it was like in the 200s or 300 video range. We're almost about to hit 600. Um, he commented about having trouble getting the dark trees over dark areas. I believe that was it. So we'll try to keep that in mind as we go to the next parts. Just adding little textures and having fun. 
All right. Halo Blue. Burnt Umber. Let's put these in. I think um, the Thalo Blue is considered a staining color. But it really shouldn't cause any issues with our tonalist approach. This tree is not sitting back the way it's supposed to. This is a small little guy coming up. Put in our small little background guys. Let's get some ultramarine blue. That'll help push it back. With the burnt umber. Yeah, Hammy. What's up, bud? Yeah? You saying hi to everybody, Hammy? Yep. Me and the cats took a nap while that storm was rolling through. These ones, just marking out the base of where these trunks are going to be. That helps me put things in perspective. Just like earlier when I was uh, using that little scraping tool and saying that these, this is where these two are going to come from. We have this guy right here. Throw some Payne's gray into this mix. There's so many little branches that come off. You don't have to paint every single one, but we can try. Reflection coming down. We have this one further back that hooks over. It's so weird. Um, I'm going to tell a little bit of a story art wise while I attempt to put this one in, and we'll, and it'll be, it'll pertain to this. I don't remember what art book it was in, but the author had said, you know, you, you have students that go out and paint, right? And you want to kind of go with the most natural trees, but most students will go out there and they'll find the one tree in the world that is upside down and try to paint that. And what I mean by that is that this tree is kind of out of place. It's falling over. It is looking weird in that scene. And it might be best just to avoid things like that at first and just go for standard trees. I hope that um, that made sense. Bring down its reflection. I guess something might look interesting to us, but in a painting, it just might seem unnatural. Let's see, um, raw sienna and our phthalo blue. Because this is going to pass in front the closer foliage. 
So we'll map that out. So you're always welcome to follow along with one of these paintings. I do feel like this one is a little bit all over the place. Um, but you're more than welcome to. And you're always welcome to sign your own name to anything you do whenever you follow along with one of my paintings. Um, you have my express permission to sell anything you do whenever you follow along with one of my paintings. Let's grab that. Pain's gray. This guy's starting to darken and soften. That'll be the darker side. Pain's gray for this fellow right here. And if you like these videos and you like what I do, please consider supporting this channel. Simply liking and subscribing really helps. Commenting and asking questions helps um, Financially if you want to support through YouTube or other links down below I have the patreon so um, check those out Let's grab some more Payne's gray This is that big tree right there And though we didn't do a dry off, we have areas that are starting to dry and it's pushing back our background as we put this in, and that helps create our sense of depth. The texture, the higher, I guess, chroma, I really need to um, get back up on my vocab game. Helps create our depth. And it's really fun building up these scenes. Now there, there's a lot of dead branches growing and covering in front here. I'm going to just uh, scrape them out. I'm going to probably pass back over, but that'll add even more depth. A great YouTube artist, uh, Rick S. I haven't referred to him in a while. He has some great tutorials, and he was one of the first painters I was watching on YouTube. If I started about three or four years ago. He... Um, would probably put masking fluid down in places like this. Probably masking fluid right here as well. Paint in a scene and then pull that off and then maybe add a little bit of color into those branches. That would be his approach. Not to put words in another painter's mouth, but that's another way you could play around with it. We have a lot of that hake brush texture and you could smooth that out, smear that out if you want. I'm thinking we would benefit from a dry off at this point. So let's pause this and we'll dry off. Okay, some areas are a little damp, but we're dry enough. I am going to grab the number four and the number one. We have our sense of depth starting to take place. We have our composition in place. Let's start playing around. this number four that we had used earlier this is, looks like a fallow blue raw sienna mix Throw 
for stronger quantities. These closer trees. Burnt umber. Hands gray, darken it. Just trying to get our gestural marks. Let's build this one up. This one I'm going to put some pretty strong raw sienna. I'm thinking even some light red oxide. So if I really look hard at that painting uh, picture, I'll see that in there. This guy has some bumps. Use the paint's gray to ground them. Alright. Now my concern at this point is that my really heavily laid on foreground trees might just, they're going to sit forward in the picture plane, which I want them to do. But my concern is, is that then looking on the interior of the scene, there might be a lack of interest after that. So I'm going to work these guys. I'm going to try to work into the picture plane for uh, more interest and depth in those areas. Just using that little cheating motion to bring that depth back a little bit. Like this region here. A little bit of interest. More of a mid ground. Some lemon yellow. Switch to the number one. Oh, these branches come down. I'm just going to try a variety of strengths with the water concentration. Um, some more pure pigment, some more water for a just tonal variation within the branches themselves. And due to, you know, filming for YouTube in the interest of time, I probably do a lot more, but I'm probably going to wind up selling myself short due to that. So if you're following along, if you're painting this scene, feel free to have fun and just like relax and paint in a whole bunch of different branches.
one thing if you ever feel like I'm painting too fast you could probably switch the playback setting to a slower speed uh, and I'm being completely honest uh, serious and honest with that I have some lemon yellow on the brush I haven't washed the brush at all but lemon yellow phthalo blue raw sienna for a foliage color Payne's Gray is great with foliage too. This side of the scene is lacking foliage, so just put a little bit, show a little bit of growth starting. That's that artistic license for you. bringing that bush line out a little bit more. A little bit of light red oxide. Let's see where we're at. Okay, so we have a sense of depth the water is looking pretty good. Um, what I want to do now is just uh, pause, do a dry off, and take a look and see how it looks there. Okay, so quick dry off. I want to accentuate this tree here. Um, just kind of have more water than pigment right there, just so I can kind of mark out and see what show you what I'm talking about. Because this area here seems a little proportionally off. Um, I always find that happens with the wide body of water in the middle of a painting. I'm not sure if it's just me that sees that, but for me personally, that's something that I have an issue with. Um, I'm just mixing a dark while I ramble. One of the ways to mitigate it would be to let's see here we cut it to a wider um, proportion perspective wise here that would help recede and uh, prevent it from sitting upright so what i'm going to try to do is take this edge and cut in a little bit closer Making it narrower, 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 right there. And what I'll do is I'll probably pull up some stuff here. So I'm adjusting the scene to make it look more natural for me. And you can tell that I'm just drawing right on it and putting these ideas in. So. Don't be afraid to do that. I always talk about that oil painting for Festa that I had that would draw directly onto the oil painting and scrape right into it. And we'd be aghast, we'd be devastated, but you know, treat the paintings like they are, like experiments. create another layer I'm pushing this forward and creating more density in the spot that it deserves and I'm not going to adjust these trees Let's 
but I am going to push this up some. And even little twigs and stuff coming up will help that. A little bit more texture. I can use lighter washes for not that light, not that dark. Throwing a few guys back here. We were talking about that tree earlier. How it felt a little unnatural. And you see how it looks now, so. Not really trying to correct it as much as um, make more interest of it. We are on the longer side with this video, so I apologize there. A while back, I was splitting the videos up into two parts where I would just stop the filming and then continue you know, like it's just a two-part video. Um, I probably should get back to that. So let me know if you find that beneficial. And it also kind of harkens back to what I said earlier, uh, just feeling a little over, all over the place with this video, having not used this palette in a while. And also, also when you paint from pictures, I do feel like there's a little bit more time taking place. We left out that railing. Um, it would potentially block the eye, but it would add a really interesting line right there, but we're gonna leave that out. So we scraped, we used the number one rigger, the number four, the hake. We didn't do any paper towel texture, I don't think. We used raw sienna, burnt umber, light red oxide, lemon yellow, uh, Payne's gray, ultramarine, and uh, phthalo blue, which was the main component to get the different feel and um, palette. And at this point, I'll probably stop in a minute or two. I don't think there's much that could be gained uh, video wise at this point, but we'll do a dry off and then I'll probably do a little bit of uh, twig work and branches off camera. And before we do the dry off, and before I do that, I will say I hope you enjoyed. Um, please uh, like, subscribe, follow, and if you follow along, tag me. I have a whole bunch of links down below, and I'd love to see what you do and what uh, comes from your experiments. And as always, thank you for your support, and thank you for... Uh, to Mr. Maga for sending me the different scraping tools. So let's see how it looks dried. All right, and there we are dried. I hope you enjoyed. Take care and have a great week.